Ah, so you've got a job for me. Do you want me to blow up some generators? Kidnap someone's daughter? Uh, <laughs> sneak into Diamond City and release all the cats from Hawthorne's house? Wait, you want me to tell you about us, the Gunners? That's what you're hiring me for? Okay, well, I guess if the pay is good, I'll tell you all you want to know. Today, I will be listing my top five facts about the Gunners in Fallout 4. Let's get into it. Starting off with number five, the Gunners are just as powerful, if not more powerful, than the Brotherhood of Steel. They may seem like just another disorganized group of scavengers, like any common raid or any common criminal, but in fact they're not. They are coordinated, and they have advanced equipment to back them up, reinforced combat armor most commonly, as well as rifles and other laser weaponry. Now, Some of their officers even wear full power armor. For heavier destruction, they control robots like Mr. Gutsy's Assaultrons and Sentry Bots, and then on rare occasions, they have their own vertebrates that can deploy two to four person strike teams that come equipped with attack dogs. Their arsenal alone should not be questioned. Now, in addition to this, they control many locations in the Commonwealth. Instead of just, you know, let's say the airport and the Cambridge Police Station, they operate in the Gunners Plaza, Green Tech Genetics, Mass Pike Interchange, Vault 75, Vault 95, all of Quincy, and many, many more. So as far as a military presence in the Commonwealth, they might just be the most fearsome. Number four, no job is too small for the gunners. Obviously, they can be found wiping out whole settlements, you know, tracking people down and killing them, but given their nature as mercenaries, if you pay well enough, they'll do anything. This is why you can find them in places like Parson State and Sane Asylum, and they're not even hostile when you first approach. They were hired by Jack Cabot to guard the place so that his father doesn't escape, and they're doing exactly that. Now, other examples of this would also be going to Hallucigen Incorporated for tech retrieval, as well as trying to deliver a case of pristine Deathclaw eggs to Wellingham and Diamond City. Of course, that didn't go so well, and you can find all of them dead, but they didn't even realize what they were transporting until they were trapped. All they were told is, get this from point A to point B, you'll get this many caps, and off they went. So, if you wanted to pull a prank on Nick, get someone to show up at his house dressed like an institute courser, and say, it's time you came home, Nick. Father misses you. Yeah, I, I bet the gunners would do it. Number three, many of them get their blood types tattooed onto their foreheads. Now, this has two main purposes. First, the battle medics know exactly what that person needs, so if they're on the battlefield, right, they've been shot, they're losing blood quickly, the medics know what to hook them up to. Why the forehead? Well, because if they can't see the symbol anymore, it doesn't really matter, then does it? Now, the second reason is for initiation. The gunners are strict when it comes to loyalty, and they want to recruit people who are going to support that. So by tattooing this, you know, regionally accepted symbol onto your head, there's no hiding who you are. Other people know you're a gunner. Other gunners, they know you're a gunner. Gunner, he knows you're a gunner. And gunner really doesn't know many things. For starters, he doesn't know his own blood type, so he tattooed an F on his forehead for Phantom. That's, oh, ble bless his heart. Number two, currently there is a feud among the leaders. Now, this isn't like them because normally any kind of disobedience is not tolerated. Thing is, Tessa, one of the officers who actually used to be a raider herself, is greatly distrustful of Clint because he used to be a Minuteman. So she sends a holotape to another officer, Baker, telling him all about this, but he, he really doesn't care. He thinks she's being out of line. This, of course, makes Tessa feel very unappreciated. Meanwhile, Clint knows she doesn't like him, and if you read his own terminal, he admits that he finds her untrustworthy as well well. This is why he keeps her busy going out on duty, you know, getting power armor, uh, going on scout missions, and also note that she can be found way down in some offbeat corner in Quincy, and Clint is on the highest spot on top of the overpass. He does not want to deal with her attitude. And yet, you know, what if she's right? What if he does betray the gunners? You, you can't trust either of them. And number one, the gunners are led by some kind of higher up. Now, who exactly that is, we can't be sure, but in some of their terminals, they hint at employers they have outside of the Commonwealth. This would actually explain why they're so heavily equipped. Certainly a hangar of vertebrates can't be found at Gunners Plaza, and that's their primary base in Boston. So it is likely that they have a powerful, well-funded employer on the outside pulling all the strings. Why else would they attack Quincy, right? No one else in the Commonwealth would want to pay them to establish a stronghold there, constantly being a threat, spreading out and capturing even more locations as they go, it has to be from some other party who wants to slowly take over Boston. Now, this also implies that they can be found in other parts of the country as well, maybe all over. Given their deadliness in combat, they could become the greatest military threat of the entire post-war era. And there you have it, my top five facts about the Gunners. If you enjoyed the video, please like, comment, and subscribe. And down below, please tell me what do you think about this group of mercenaries. Alright, thank you very much for watching, and now I believe you owe me... 
What's this, 50 caps? For all of that? All right, hands behind your head. You're coming with me. 